What is beautiful about the human epigenome? Don't get me started. So first of all, as an engineering feat, the human epigenome manages the most compact, the most incredible compaction you could imagine. So every single one of your cells contains two meters worth of DNA. And this is compacted in a radius, which is one thousandth of a millimeter. That's six orders of magnitude. To give you a sense of scale, it's as if a string as tall as the Burj Al Khalifa, which is about a kilometer tall, was compacted into a tiny little ball the size of a millimeter. And if you put it all together, if you stretch the trillions of cells that we have, we have about 30 trillion cells in your body. If you stretch the DNA, the two meters worth of DNA in every one of your trillion cells, you would basically reach all the way to Jupiter a <laughs> hundred times. Yeah, it's all curled up in there. It's, it's 30 all, trillion cells. 30 trillion cells. In the human body. Every one of them, two meters worth of DNA. So all of that is compacted through the epigenome. The epigenome basically has the ability to compact this massive amount of DNA from here to Jupiter 10 times into one human body, into just the nuclei of one human body, and the vast majority of the human body is not even these nuclei. And that's sort of the structural part. So, so, so that's the boring part, that's the structural part. The functional part is way more interesting. So functionally, what the human epigenome allows you to do is basically control the activity patterns of thousands of genes. So 20,000 genes in your human body, every one of your cells only needs a few thousand of those, but a different few thousand of those. And the way that your cells remember what their identity is, is basically driven by the epigenome. So the epigenome is both structural in sort of making this dramatic compaction, and it's also functional in being able to actually control the activity patterns of all your cells. Now, can we draw a, a definition, distinction between the genome and the epigenome? Again, being Greek, epi means on top of. Mm -hmm. So the genome is the DNA, and the epigenome is anything on top of the DNA. And there's you know, three types of things on top of the DNA. The first is chemical modifications on the DNA itself. So we like to think of four bases of the DNA, A, C, G, T. C has a methyl form which is sometimes referred to as the fifth base. So methyl C takes a different meaning. So in the same way that uh, you have annotations in a orchestra score that basically say whether you should play something softly or loudly or space it out or you know uh, interpret basically the score, the human epigenome allows you to modify that primary score. So a modified C basically says, play this one softly. It's basically a sign of repression in a gene regulatory region. I, I love how you're talking about the, the function that uh, emerges from the epigenome as a, as a musical score. <laughs> <laughs> it is, is in many ways. And uh, every single cell plays a different part of that score. It's like having all of human knowledge in 23 volumes, like 23 giant books, which are your chromosomes. And every single cell has a different profession, a different role. Some cells play the piano and they're looking at chapter seven from chromosome 23 and chapter four from chromosome two and so on and so forth. And each of those uh, pieces are all encoding in the same DNA. But what the epigenome allows you to do is effectively conduct the orchestra and sort of coordinate the pieces so that every instrument plays only the things that it needs to play.